A very good afternoon to all. Today, on the 29th of May, we are seeing the lockdown 4.0. And all of us at, in India, we are quite uh, unsure about the future. We are in a very different uh, pandemic times, uh, very unprecedented. And I think every morning we wake up and COVID-19 or corona is something which has become a way of our life unfortunately. But a lot of good things that we have seen around is the way that we have great leadership that has come through, whether it is uh, good decision making at the government level, so that how to, you know, help uh, to, you know, mitigate the problems, the way we have the doctors and a lot of other un unsaid, you know, people right from police force who have really helped to improve the situation. The way the human, I mean, overall, if you look at the youngsters, how they have really behaved. Today, my heart goes out to all the youngsters and especially the students who are studying in schools. And more so, a lot of students were so anxious because they are at the, you know, I would say crossroads where the, many of their board examination papers have to be held. You know, it very interestingly, let me mention that Amity University Haryana has started and initiated a very interesting academic leadership forum where we have the voices of the principals and the leadership from the schools. So in that we have started a series of great panel discussion during these times and many of them have been on different uh, issues including mental health, pedagogy. Today I think we are emphasizing a lot on the classroom experience and experience and how do you improve engagement in school. I, I really want to take your, you know, uh, bring your attention to the fact that, you know, when we talk about classroom engagement, I think we have to remember there is, it is very much complementary to empowering the students. And there are two most important aspects I, wa I want to emphasize on. One is related to the attention and the other is related to the, the commitment of students. So when you look at typically a classroom situation, you may have certain uh, students who are actually following the norm, who are following the regulations, so which means they are there in attention, but there is not much commitment. But if you want to improve and bring a system when there is a lifelong learning that gets ingrained in students right from the early years in the school up to the K-12 level, and a seamless transition from K-12 to the higher education, it is very important that students need to build those skills and competencies. For that, I think a major role and emphasis would be of the teachers and the principals and leaders of the school in terms of the mission and the vision of the school, in terms of the way you know people implement processes. So here, I would definitely like to mention that uh, if you look at a model given by Shaleti, you know, I think 2002, you will see an engagement model which was taken. And it has been seen that the engagement model, you have students in the classroom, which can be from rebellion to the students who are engaged. And students where there are engagement, definitely you will find high in terms of both, you know, attention and in terms of the commitment levels that they have. So today we have really want to, I'm very interested to see and hear from each of the principals here today, that what are your views? How are you, you know, enforcing this kind of an environment in the schools so that students are prepared for higher learning, so that there is a better outcome in terms of success, so that there, they stud each student become a lifelong learner and handle a very, very chaotic world, which is going to be a new normal. So I welcome each one of you, and I'm really happy that I'm part of this forum and this one and a half hours next are going to be very, very interesting and fruitful. So welcome each one of you. Thank you. Dr. Reina, please take it forward. Thank you so much, Sachinji, and thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, ma'am also spoke about uh, the varied kind of students that we have in the class. We have uh, uh, students who pay a lot of attention and are committed, and there are students who probably only fake attention. So here the teachers' roles uh, come into the fore. Um, earlier, it was not expected from the teachers to be facilitators or, you know, pay attention to each students, but now uh, the, the role has become uh, bigger and more important, and now they are supposed to be facilitators. 
so they make students like ma'am said lifelong learner and so they are able to uh, inspire students to construct knowledge on their own so uh, i wanted to ask mrs uh, irena mukherjee is the principal of samarthi school if uh, you could throw a little light on this particular facet of teaching mrs irena mukherjee uh, good afternoon to all my fellow panelists and esteemed guests um dr banerjee before uh, i uh, answer the question i would like to thank you all for giving me this opportunity to express my viewpoint um in the 21st century a teacher is more of a mentor a motivator someone who engages uh, the students and provides guidance to become responsible and committed future citizens a passionate and innovative teacher can turn the classroom around we all know a teacher has the influence on a child and can bring about positive changes in him or her there are multiple ways by which teachers can help the students construct knowledge themselves after all educators are leaders they are role models and idols that students look up to we all know that in today's world teaching is more than disseminating information and facts advances in technology have made information available at the click of a button and indeed this has changed the role of a teacher today a teacher needs to just show the way forward and the students assume responsibility for their own learning by self discovery by bringing the world into the classroom the teacher provides the food for thought this in turn promotes critical thinking in the students in progressive schools like ours teachers allow their students to reflect and observe their surroundings they encourage them to see patterns found in nature think out of the box and encourage different solutions to the same problem today educators are aware of their responsibilities they understand curiosity prepares the brain for learning they encourage their students to ask questions and this results in deep learning and a sound foundation in project based learning the teacher encourages students to work in teams and collaborate and thus construct knowledge themselves i would like to sum up by saying that a good teacher can inspire hope ignite the imagination and instill a love of learning thank you thank you so much thank you so much for your views we know that teachers are inspiration and you also spoke about critical thinking i think yeah that is extremely important for our students you know to take further challenges and thus my question is uh, to dr geetanjali grover uh, i just wanted to know that what are your teachers doing to equip students for higher learning because you know students stay in a very protected environment in school but then they have to face the challenges of the future and when they go to university so for this higher learning what um are your teachers going to equip students? uh my question is for uh, dr geetanjali grover yes very good afternoon thank you ma'am thanks for a brilliant question because there is so much to be spoken for this topic itself because nowadays as principal or as teacher uh, we, earlier what we were happening that we were only focusing on our the result of the students board result and that was enough for the schools that was enough for the principals they were never bothering about why where the students are going after the school whether they are going to the right direction whether they are really selecting the the subjects the streams that they are fit for and they were not knowing even about their own aptitude their own skills their own capabilities also now it is as far as the the i would say the higher diversity of uh, uh, career is opening in front of all of us and uh, the students are asking from us and we are also now getting very much concerned ki oh yes 
this this is not only our responsibility to make them out with a good result with the 95% uh, marks or 100% marks or 80% marks our responsibility is whether our child actually knows where he can go whether our child is equipped for what he is made for what he is standing for what he aspires for so nowadays a big responsibility has uh, has been bestowed upon the schools also it's not only the school teachers it's not only the principal it's not only the counselor each and every part of our uh, school environment has to be developed in such a way that the student starts aspiring students start uh, visualizing himself in the higher perspective in the higher education where he is going and why he is going there why because unless he knows the reason he cannot go into the depth of that he cannot be the passionate for that kind of stream so my point is that first of all we need to uh, select we need to finalize get what the child is made of what the child personality is uh, suitable for so in that very perspective we keep on observing the students we give give them aptitudes test also we give them exposure uh, like uh, that many career counselors are coming over there or many other guidance and counseling is also to be given over there in the classes in the uh, you can say sessions or not if that is happening that means the students have started thinking otherwise i would say if you ask from the school students what you are going to be when you grow up 80% 80% of them don't know they think okay we will see after we get the result then we will start thinking and this is where we are actually lagging behind in our indian system so uh, now when we are opening up the spectrum in front of them when we are talking to them openly one to one what you, what you want to be what you uh, what your parents want to, to make you also because both the things sometimes match sometimes doesn't match also so in that very way once we feel that the parents are thinking something else and the child aspires for something else then we keep on speaking with the parents also we need to keep we need to speak to the parents also because parents may not be aware parents may not be even knowing their children parents are only thinking about their own ambitions which they wanted to fulfill through their children so number one that career counseling proper guidance counseling has to be given to the students at this very young stage itself when they start visualizing uh, another thing that we can experiment that we make them uh, to get the exposure of universities of the colleges of such kind of sessions that they go and because nowadays many universities many colleges are opening up the doors for the students students of classes 11th and 12th also so give them exposure to go to over there go to the, those places and then they can visualize themselves whether i am going to come over here or not if i am uh, if i am really aspiring to come over there then i should start practicing for that i should start preparing for that in that very way visualization the imagination of the children has to be uh, you can say built up through that stage itself has to be constructed at very that very stage only when they are in 9th 10th 11th and 12th 12th particularly and once the child thinks that yes i am going to be in that line then he starts he should be motivated he should be motivated to find out what are the eligibility conditions what are the criteria to get admission over there so this kind of counseling if starts going over there in the school level itself then i feel that the child will be more confident the child will be uh, more confirmed about his own capabilities and he would be having enough of time to polish his own skills also and sometimes uh, all of a sudden you see sometimes it, it happens that there are three four options in front of the children and they are not confirmed what to do so in that very condition also the child the teacher should be uh, you can say equipped with that kind of understanding that uh, what kind of uh, stream or what kind of capability is most suitable to him and in that very way the teacher can guide also so my understanding is that the, he should be given the exposure of uh, career counseling he should be given exposure of uh, visiting colleges and universities and if not visiting over there also but there are nowadays so many options we can show them through ppts also what kind of uh, environment is over there and uh, such uh, and some kind of, even visiting industries factories visiting some good offices even visiting uh, hospitals visiting such kind of environment where like like uh, uh, courts courts also sometimes make them to feel to dream yes i am coming up over here so in such kind of environment the child gets proper 
uh, you can say uh, education proper man mentoring that yes i am fit for this place so and because and particularly i would say that the children should be uh, encouraged to go for higher education because uh, so far in our uh, indian system we have perceived that only 10%, 10% of the students are going for the higher education. What are the reasons? What are the problems over there? So in such situation, we can speak to the parents. We can find yeah. out some, we can, we can find out some ways for them also, some kind of scholarships, because sometimes students don't know that there are the scholarships, there are the education loans which are available. So if any teacher, any felicitator is over there who is helping, who is connected with the student all the time, and he can guide that this kind of education loan is also available so it will not be burdensome for you so such kind of yes if we utilize and definitely uh, so schools have to be very, a lot uh innovation is, uh, yes so um yeah so you're talking about you know understanding the students aptitude and giving them the exposure so absolutely and for that i think schools require a lot of innovation and innovative practices so my question now is to uh, Mrs. Pankaj Jamwal. Uh, I just wanted to know that how do you reinforce an environment of uh, innovative practices in your school? Mrs. Jamwal. Thank you, Reena. Uh, first of all, Mashkar, a very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, well, uh, as an educationist, what I really believe, uh, you see, uh, we can uh, make the children sit on books for days and days, but that's not the actual teaching. When we give uh, real world problems to the students to tackle, I believe they try. Uh, they may fail and try again because it is something connected to them in actual life. So this way they get experience and uh, realize their importance as well as the importance of their own viewpoint. Then uh, I believe the pedagogy based on discovery and inquiry. It's, it's more exciting uh, as compared to the formal pattern of reading and writing or even memorizing, which uh, most of the schools I believe are still following. Uh, another thing that I believe is that the students of all ages, they need a creative learning pattern. Uh, in other words, uh, it is experiential or self-learning pattern because uh, it helps to synthesize information and uh, it brings joy as well as meaning in their, in their learning atmosphere where, uh, wherein they feel that, yes, they do have importance to their own thinking. They can learn on their own. They just don't need a teacher around to dictate or even uh, to facilitate many a times. So that is something that's very important in today's uh, school curriculum. Furthermore, I believe when we focus towards the teachers, they, they play a very vital role uh, in, 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 our, in you know, nurturing the children's uh, overall experience of learning as well as understanding. So the teachers can adopt different techniques and mechanisms uh, for a better understanding, for a better of, I would say, a learning and a teaching environment in the school. So the very first thing that they need to work on is the mindset. Like in our Indian education system, the, the mindset is that teacher is the leader and the students are the followers. But it has to be reversed. It has to be changed. I believe the students in today's scenario are to be made the leaders and the teachers need to play the guide's role. They just need to guide the children and uh, rest is the, the child's innovation. Rest is the child's wild thinking and, you know, finding things on their own. Discoveries come out only when you give chances to someone. So that's one thing that's very, very important because until unless you don't change this mindset and you keep following that the teacher is the only one who will lead, we really cannot give an independent atmosphere to our children. Then um, I believe when you're changing this mindset, there's another thing that's very important and open. That is the open-ended questions to be asked. Like in our curriculum, we have many questions in, uh, you know, in, in the end of the chapter. But uh, when we lay out open-ended questions, it gives space to more debates. Uh, I would say it encourages discussions. 
uh, and and it is something that makes the children feel they belong they belong to a class their viewpoints are more important it's not just a fixed answer that has to be given in the classroom so uh, students they feel connected to the environment which is more participative and it brings joy in the learning uh, and uh, reading atmosphere another thing that's very important uh, i believe is the flexible learning environment you have to be flexible you have to give space in the classroom like a teacher cannot just read and ask questions let the children probe let the children have open house discussions in the classroom let them let them just move around the spaces if when you're giving space to a child they reconnect they feel that this is their uh, space this is their open area where they can freely uh, express themselves so that's that's something very very important in in today's scenario so uh, i would say it it creates a learning space for everybody and i believe even teachers come into it then for the, i i i would like to add on that flipped learning classroom model is something which is being experimented all over the world and it's something mm -hmm. that resulted with great uh, good performances in children now what what exactly we do in this model is that the child does the homework reading of the context at home but in the school the time it is reserved only and only for debates for discussions for brainstorming sessions and activities teacher plays a guide or a facilitator's role so obviously very, that very important uh, model you are discussing there if we have time we'll again ask you uh, this actually uh, you were mentioning about the classroom environment and uh, that is why i just wanted to ask at this moment uh, this is neeta arora who is uh, fortunately here uh, now and uh, i just wanted to ask her that uh, you know uh, for a healthy environment in the classroom i think teachers also require certain competence and uh, if we ask about your school what competencies of teachers would you look for uh, if you want a healthy classroom environment and innovative environment in the classroom teacher is as important as the principal or the management of the school the more you realize it more responsibility and respect you give to the teacher and the teacher would never be another one they are the ones who need the children they are the ones who try to bring the learning alive for the child and they are the ones who are facing the parents as well so it all teachers by and large would like to be respected by the students they come prepared so if you want your teacher to command respect you give them so when you give them respect their self confidence goes up you have already done the hiring after due process of selection right? and now you have to trust them allow them to do action research allow them to think of a new strategy that they can bring to the school say for example when you bring in teachers with multiple backgrounds or from multiple systems of schooling and when i hire in our school we do not just go in for say a cbse trained teacher i would love to have a teacher who taught in ib or in icsc or in a foreign board or has taught in different sections of different states of india they bring in and then you allow them to discuss it's not about you are the youngest in the team so your ideas i have no meaning it's only your hod who will tell you what to do in fact some of the most brilliant action researches have come from my new joinees and those action researches have been shared with all others sometimes when they are doing the so called practice teaching in a group we all learn so much from our new teachers and uh, yes now you have to empower your teacher apart from expecting them to share their best practices with you you also have to give them the tools to become better you have to allow them to you know when you have to give them training opportunities there are so many mooc trainings available there are so many face to face there are so many webinars like ours available nowadays even earlier and then you also have to bring the best resource person to your school keeping in mind their engagement at home keeping in mind their comfort factor it's not that they had a ptm till 2 pm and then you have a workshop for them from 2 to 5 pm so you have to think about how do you make your teachers not burnt out So if you take care of all that, and there's empathy in you, because if a principal feels she is a teacher first, principal later, she will always remember that this is what she liked doing in a class. This is what she didn't like doing. This is what my teachers may also not like. So you have to bring in the source person, and one the source person that I brought in my own school was Mahatatwa, and we had a series of design thinking workshops. Initially, teachers did not realize why do I require design thinking. 
culture because I am as it is very empowered. And then now I am, you know, literally seeing that the benefit of that two years of design thinking workshops, the more way the teachers adopted the online is because they were open to new ideas, new forms of learning. And now the thing that we expect our teachers to understand that the role reversal is possible in your classes. It's not that I want you to only teach. The children can take up your task. In fact, if you empower children to be the teacher in a class for a day or a week, you'll be very happy. And if your class is activity based, we would love it. We don't want you to just be a theoretical teacher. Yes, we do want them to make notes. We do want them to make PPTs. We do want them to be ready. But at the same time, we also want them to empower the child. In that, the teacher gets lighter moments, plus the children become leaders. And that is what we, the teaching is meant for. Teaching is not to empower only the mentors. And uh, you allow teachers to make the children go out of the classroom. You're teaching maths, you've got to say, for example, you just cannot talk about volume or perimeter without giving them a scale or a glass to measure things. And grade one, two, three, when you're doing experiments, those concepts become so much ingrained. So that means you have to give them support. Your maths lab should be very cute. You have to give them those kits. You can simply cannot say that you bring things from your home. There's no need, the school will not support you. The school has to provide the resources. In that, we find that the teachers go out of way and they bring in their own resources to add on, or the children are given responsibility. The parents also equally chip in. So it's a win win for all the school, the children, the teacher, and the parents, and even the community. I've got so much of the community. Like you are giving us this help through this webinar. So, our, I mean, if I become empowered, and many of my teachers have joined today's session, they're also becoming trained how to train these children for higher education. And we're talking about higher education. I feel there's so many institutes where children are getting hands on training in this today's COVID time. I want universities to provide hands on courses. Rather than doing a simple graduation or post graduation, like MIT has law, MIT has many other courses which are professional courses. Right. Simply doing a graduation for the sake of graduation has no relevance now. And in COVID situation, we have allowed our children to choose the streams. I'll be very rigid about your marks are not there, so you not get the stream. Now I realize everybody, if they want IT, I should not prevent them. <laughs> if they want applied right. maths, at least they should be given a chance. They should not be forced to take a line of subject. They should be allowed to take any professional subject. So my school has 35 subjects for just three streams. And you can choose any combination. And okay. yes, and if you have the will, there's a way. And the best thing that principal has to consider herself, a student, a teacher, a parent. Yeah. She has to play many roles, wear many hats. Sure. Many Thank you so much. I'll come to you again in case this time. Sure. Let's go to yeah, I'd love to hear you again. Uh, in fact, you know, I'm glad that you spoke about the parents also. And uh, parents are a very important part of the ecosystem uh, of education. So uh, my next question is related to that only. Uh, and my question is for uh, this, uh, Mrs. Amita Mohan. Uh, and the question is that um, I'm sure this uh, parents also have uh, a lot to say about uh, the school and the curriculum and the pedagogy. They must be giving a lot of feedback and the feedback must be coming from the students also. So how do you take that feedback first of all? And um, is there a way you implement it? Because, you know, if you have any positive suggestion that you think that you can incorporate in these schools. Uh, Mrs. Amita Mohan. Good afternoon. Thank you, Reema. Thank you. Good afternoon to all uh, present here for the panel discussion, to the panelists and to the viewers. Uh, I hope all of us are safe and at home in the COVID-19 period. Feedback is very, very important. Without your uh, feedback panel, I don't think we can survive or we can move ahead. Because until unless you don't know how you're performing, what is your index, what are your areas where you can be measured, we have a system where parents do give in to feedback to us through the emails, through a format or tabular rubrics has been prepared for them. And for students, we have suggestion boxes, for student council members also who are appointed and who are with the children discussing about on the ground what issues that they have it. Now, once the feedback comes, if you ask feedback from anyone and everyone is ready to tell you, like you go. If one person is sick in the house, 10 people will come and guide you. What can be done to cure yourself? So the feedback is endless, but we have to scrutinize that feedback. We have to see what feedback is actually viable and implemented, can be implemented. For example, if a parent would come and say, oh, no, I want the bus to come only at 8 o'clock, not at 7.20. Now that's a feedback which I can't work on it because there's a certain time and discipline that has to be maintained. 
Now, students' feedback would be that we want games period throughout the day. Now, that feedback also can't be implemented. Feedback which is, which is genuine. It could be about, uh, you know, about the safety or the security of the school or the children or about the feedback of the teaching of the teacher is concerned. Yeah. There are different panels. There are different people to monitor all that. And that is how the monitoring is taken up. Now, like we have, uh, as per the CBSC guidelines, we have different committees in the school. Starting from the POXO committee that the children would be there, where the children, students themselves are the members of those committees. Because A, as all the panelists who have spoken so far have spoken about it, that how empowering the children, how giving them space, how making them accountable. Now, we have a safety security committee of the uh, students along with the parents who take rounds. Now, if a child is caught cheating in the school, the school all of a sudden just can't decide. The panel, the committee of the students and the parents sits over it and decides what action can be taken. Because any action that is taken will have its reactions too about it. So it's very important that the feedback that has been taken, A, it is categorized, symbolized, which can be implemented, how it can be implemented. And that's why in Amity, we believe that the open door policy is very, very important. Parents know that they can approach and everybody is approachable in the school. And there are sometimes when they approach a thing of confidentiality that has to be maintained, that too is also maintained. Because it should not ripple down onto the child if there's any feedback that has to come onto it. So I think that's feedback may be criticism. Now there, there, I mean, you can't be hundred percent perfect in every sphere. There will be criticism right. for it. But we are taught by my chairperson, Dr. Mr. Mita Chauhan, ma'am, that you need to be resilient. You need to rise up to it. Criticisms will come. You need to take it in the go. I mean, that's very important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, we were uh, talking about. Uh, you know, of course, criticism, um, it is difficult to take it. And, you know, sometimes uh, you just have to take it in your stride. Um, we have, uh, this is Sunita Arora, who's uh, joined us all the way from uh, Harbra, Kolkata. And the technology, of course, has helped us here because, you know, she's here and uh, now talking. And uh, Mrs. Arora, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Okay, great. Yeah. So we were uh, just talking about technology and technology has helped uh, us with your presence today. So we just wanted to talk about uh, the present situation, the Corona crisis that we have. And uh, we are now banking a lot on uh, online learning and blended learning. So just wanted to know that, um, you know, it came all of a sudden, the lockdown came all of a sudden. So how did you adapt and how your school adapted to the online and blended learning? Uh, you know, and how much time did it take for you to adapt to that? Thank you, Reena, and uh, greetings from DPS Haura to everyone. Where online learning is um, new and it's complex and an emerging field. Uh, we have to keep in mind that it came into being to solve the current teaching problems and to avoid the educational backlog. How quickly we adapted and challenges, of course, there are many challenges we are facing, we are overcoming it. And where adaptation is concerned, I think during tough times, we adapt pretty fast. See, overnight, the psychological barriers for online teaching vanished. The teaching fraternity took to online classes like duct takes to water. We've all seen that, and I uh, really appreciate teachers all over for this. So keeping the current uh, situation in mind, uh, we had to uh, keep a lot of things in our mind and go about uh, online teaching. So we decided overnight uh, we had our meetings and teachers were grouped, teachers were told to uh, take relevant links and videos because there's a treasure trove of online study material available. I did not want my teachers to send their recorded videos teaching because online material is really very interesting and it captivates the student's mind. So day one, the links are uploaded by the teachers. Uh, and this is done very consciously. We took this, um, uh, uh, you know, we very consciously did this because see, not every household has a laptop and the mobile phones or the elders have everybody does not have a mobile phone and everybody for online teaching this is the prerequisite 
so when we up, when we upload the link or the video the teacher, the student can go through these videos or the links at his pace and at his own time and convenience the second day what we did was we used to upload the questions now this led to collaboration and group work students made uh, uh, their group work uh, uh, their own little groups over whatsapp and day three, then we had the face-to-face -face online teaching with our face-to-face uh, -face online teaching uh, were continued with the teacher. Here, the role of the teacher was that of a facilitator. Uh, she acted as a coach and there was healthy discussion, debating. And if there was any doubt, this was the time to solve it. The challenge here was it is running very smoothly, but the challenge initially was that the students felt that they knew it all and they did not have anything to discuss and there were students who did not go through the study material because they wanted face-to-face -face, uh, online teaching anyway that is sorted and now we are it is it is an evolving process so we are trying moving towards research-based and discovery-based learning because we cannot have regular eight period per day teaching classes online teaching is rather conceptual so the two concepts are dealt with daily Two different subjects, two concepts are dealt simultaneously. The videos are getting uploaded simultaneously. The questionnaires are getting uploaded. So the students are well occupied and the learning is happening. Now, where challenges are concerned, see, first challenge was which platform to choose. The platform most of us chose, we had to discontinue. And then there are these connectivity issues. Then, you know, the problems are very localized. We had the Amphoon storm. And, uh, the, you know, right now, online classes, it stands still. Thankfully, we have given a short summer break, but then connectivity issues do continue and carry on. Of course, we had to send a lot of guidelines for netiquettes. This was one of the challenge. We, want, we didn't want the pa parents hovering behind while the teacher is teaching. It is very distracting. And of course, guidelines for eye care, because so much of media, they were, you know, looking at the mobile phones or the laptop, we had to ensure that they are looking after their eyes. Then there was, there is also the challenge of, uh, you know, assessment. How do we assess the students? Now, this we are still working upon it. The assessments are more project based. And how do we identify the weak students online classes? I don't think we can identify the weak students. Moreover, we are unable to fulfill the social and emotional need of the child. Neither are we able to fulfill the psychological and uh, physical need because there are no active pursuits like sports. There are no social pursuits like, you know, friendship, camaraderie, even rivalry and peer pressure, which is required for holistic development of uh, the students. So uh, hence, we gave them a lot of value based activities so that they could bond with their families and help in the household chores. Uh, of course, as I said earlier, it is an emerging uh, field. There's a lot to be done, but I would like to say, add over here and conclude that online learning is a value addition. It's definitely not a replacement. Thank you so much. Um, I'm sure that it was very challenging the COVID times, but all the schools and the university were able to adapt themselves quickly and, um, you know, took the challenge. Uh, very well. Uh, I now just wanted to ask uh, Mr. Dhiren Singh, uh, sorry, Mr. Dr. C. V. Singh. Uh, the question is about these challenges only, and sometimes you know the challenges are such that probably the in-house challenge that we have is not able to solve it. Uh, sometimes you have to take help of the guidelines that are available or some external sources. My question to you is that. Um, Sometimes we engage eminent uh, people from the education sector or from the statutory body uh, in your school for improvement in teaching learning practice. Uh, good Singh. afternoon, everybody. Uh, first of all, I extend my gratitude to all the panelists, panel chair, Dr. Banerjee, uh, vice chancellor of MT University, uh, Dr. Reena Nigam, HOI. Sachin Junejaji, marketing head of MIT, who brought the university at the doorstep of the school. It's a really great honor for all of us to be here to discuss about the future of this country. Basically, teacher is the main body in the school to run 
the whole academic atmosphere of the school. Teacher nowadays or every time is not a teacher if he she avoids feel passion, not understand the turbulent emotions of the children, does not make their eyes glisten and increase their heartbeat. When teacher is connected with the students, when teacher engages them, when teacher understands their learning style, he or she can be a successful teacher. Force the people to motivate the teacher, to inspire the teachers, to give the training of the technology. Teacher must be customized nowadays. Teaching and learning effective and interesting. In a classroom, we see there are different kind of children. They have different kind of learning style. Ma'am, there are seven learning styles: visual, oral, verbal, physical, logical, social, and solitary. And in your classroom, you will find a student of every learning style. So as, as a teacher, we have to understand the different learning style of the learner in the classroom. We have to customize our teaching as per the learning style of the students. It's a very high time when we have to understand all the things. Technology cannot replace the teacher because if as per the learning style of the student, students are living human beings. They feel emotions. They feel passion. They see in the eyes. Then only students can be connected with the teacher. If they are not connected with the teacher, then they cannot learn. So nowadays, teaching must be project-based, career-based. I really appreciate the effort of the university, MIT University especially, when your persons like Mr. Sachin Juneja, they are coming to school, they are taking the classes of the students, they are guiding them for the different career options, according to their potential as my colleagues have discussed yet because in earlier days students knew about only three streams or what their parents discuss at their home you are very much correct i agree with the views of the panelist that parents wanted to complete their dreams from their children or through their children now when the people like you are coming in the school they are guiding them motivating them supporting them showing them the way that only engineering only medical and only being ca is not the way to bright in the life or to find a lucrative career so we have to now focus on the customized teaching as per the potential, as per the learning style, as per the interest of the child. We invite the people like you in the school and really you people are helping us a lot. Teaching doesn't mean only the rote learning, doesn't only mean to provide a certificate or to get admission in an university. Teaching learning must be purposeful career oriented, job oriented, skill based, knowledge based, which gives the wings to the students to fly, not only the certificate. I'm really Bye. thankful to you. It's over to you now. When you will take my next turn, then I'll come again. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, I know Sachin Jean will help in going to all the schools and uh, ma'am, uh, you know, has been going to all the schools and giving her uh, advice, so preparing students for higher learning. 
my last question is to Mr. Tirendra Singh. And, uh, you know, since uh, this is a very innovative school, Sehwag uh, International School, um, I just wanted to ask you, uh, Mr. Singh, that uh, do you think that educators are actually the change agents who can actually create a conducive environment for talent development? Mr. Tirendra Singh. Uh, good afternoon, uh, all dear panelists and member of board from the Amity. And uh, I'm basically speaking from Jajar. Yesterday we had a bad weather condition, so the net connectivity is a little erratic. I hope you will uh, bear with me in case if there is uh, any issue in between. And hopefully I wish that uh, I will be able to sail through this session because all this while it has been perfectly fine. Uh, the question is that what is the role of educators in uh, grooming children so that their talent potential is realized? Now, I think this question is going to sum up this entire uh, point of discussion. Like, uh, I will just quote uh, uh, some of our, my fellow panelists and Ms. Pankaj Jamwal. He spoke about experiential learning uh, and changing mindset of stu uh, from student to be leader and teacher as a guide. Ms. Neeta Arora mentioned about the capacity building of the teachers, freedom to the teachers, involving parents in decision-making process. Mrs. Amita Mohan also mentioned similar sentiments. So all these things justify and clearly points out the role of an educator in a student's life. And just to begin with, uh, I tried to draw a parallel from one of the incidents from Mahabharat. When Arjun was going for uh, Matasya Bhed, piercing the fish eye, and just a night before, uh, he was discussing with Krishna. And Krishna advised him that, uh, Arjuna, you have to take your foot forward, focus on the eye of the fish, and then the task would be done. So Arjun asked uh, Krishna that, uh, if I have to do everything, then what you are going to do? So to this query, Krishna replied that I will do what you will not be able to do. So Krishna, uh, then Arjun asked him that, what is that which I am not going to do? So Krishna replied then that I am going to keep the water stable. I am going to keep that environment stable so that you can focus on your target very clearly. Now, Krishna was a kind of mentor to Arjun and so is our role in the school community. I see that a teacher or a uh, educational administrator or anybody who has got stake in any way in the school or in the universities, our role is to keep that water still and keep our students directed towards what is the likely future which is going to emerge. And when we talk about talent, talent basically to me, it, it is that it is a very systematically uh, systematically developed training skills, which, uh, which develops some ability, or it develops a competency in one of the life activities. And if you can be placed in the top 10% of your age group, whatever is your domain, then you are a talented person. So when a child walks into the school, each child is a gifted child. Somebody might be very good in academics. Somebody is very good in singing. Somebody is good in painting. We all know from our experience. So that's the natural gift which a child possesses. Now, the role of a teacher is to identify what is the strength of the child. And somewhere, uh, one of the panelists also mentioned about, I think uh, Mrs. Banerjee mentioned about that the classroom has a student spectrum right from rebellion to somebody who is very engaged in the classroom activity. So it is the role of the teacher that identify the strength of the student and then design mechanism, create an environment which will help the student to reach his potential, sharpen his uh, skills, and then systematically design a module or a program which can systematically create, nurture that talent, which can create that talent. Like for example, uh, self-learning is going to be one of the key aspects 
it was before and now we are realizing all the material is available on net now every school is making its best effort uh, by giving assignments making powerpoint presentations designing innovative way of assessment and all but every student is not getting engaged to the same extent so a student who is uh, mentally very disciplined he is making best use of the facility and if you see that uh, i we are also running a program online but if all these things are not given from our side there is already enough material available on the net so what is required the skill set which is required is that the student should know that what is will be his need in the future one and second is he mentally disciplined to utilize all the resources so this this kind of trait will come from a teacher a teacher is a role model student look up to the teacher to their seniors uh, even to the senior students and they learn from each other so i feel that if every uh, stakeholder who is responsible for the education of the children in the school if they can be good role models i think we can create that environment which will be very conducive and i would just sum it up uh, education is not merely completion of syllabus it is the accountability that what will be the need of the student 20 years 30 years 50 years and somebody who is in class 1 i have to extend my timeline for next 70 80 years can i foresee that world which is going to emerge and am i responsibly giving that kind of skill set to my students and if my answer is yes i think we are doing a good job and there is one uh, some uh, one conclusion from one of the educational seminars which i heard i don't know how much it is correct but i believe that yes there is some element of truth into it uh, the conclusion of this seminar was that 65% of our school population is going to land up into jobs which are yet to be created now if 65% is going to land up into those professions which are which we can't even think of today and if my energy is just going into merely transforming of the bookish knowledge into the student mind and then rating them on that scale i think we have we need to change this mindset so let us uh, infuse that kind of talent where the student is inquisitive where he is ready to take a risk and he, he is self disciplined i think we will do a good job and therefore uh, this is where the role of a teacher is there if he can create that environment the student is going to learn on his own that's all from my side thank you thank you so much summed up very well in fact uh, yes uh, the educators are going to be the change agents and uh, we know that things are going to change but then teachers if they are able to make the student a lifelong learner then they can uh, take any challenge that comes in the future for them um we have uh, finished with all the speakers here and uh, i just wanted to request uh, dr padma kali banerji ma'am uh, ma'am would you like to say a few words before we go to the question and answer now okay ma'am i want to speak two lines uh, just to motivate the teachers it is for all the teachers those who are related to the education fraternity the people like uh, dr banerji uh, reena nigam ma'am and uh, mr sachin juneja uh, things have been deferred not shattered we are locked but not stopped still working day and night to make the future of this country bright i salute all of you that in these hot days difficult days you are really doing very wonderful job motivating the teachers inspiring the principals and helping in this country to bring them on the right track so thank you to amit and thank you to the team of amit sachin sir thank you to you pleasure sir thank, thank you sir. thank you very much uh, if i may uh, conclude i must say that today we have had a great and a robust uh, you know session uh, session with uh, most of the dynamic people that we could have and i must tell you right from classroom experience to engagement to parent involvement to teacher training to online resources to books we have spoken about a lot 
definitely i wanted to uh, you know mention a little bit more about the students because i think in the times to come when we are talking about this you know disruption and uh, disruptive technology where we are having lot of people like you know students are going to play a very big role so uh, coming back to what we were talking about we are both interested in attendance of students as well as attentiveness of the students and so that you know the new work that they're going to come up with are going to be that of creativity so i i have a few just to sum up all of that has been discussed because the last uh, presenter has already done the summing up of the session i just want to say that in the designing of the classroom experience it is very important to integrate choices that you give to your students collaboration that is there you know that they work in teams then the kind of communication that you leave them today with and critical thinking creativity and ability to handle the change i think this kind of and we have talked about it as a Uh, you know in a paper which i've talked about six c's of you know curriculum design it is it is the experience that we are seeing that more and more we make students a little more independent so they can become a part of the larger whole of learning so definitely with the kind of leadership that is coming from the principals the knowledge that is coming from the teachers and the online resources because we have to acknowledge both the books and the online uh, proper resources it would be a great experience and i would just want to touch upon that you know there would be a great role for assessments as well because are we testing what students know or we are we are going into a set pattern so also the way the assessments will be happening in the near future a lot of changes that we are going to see already regulatory bodies are working at it so i think we are going to see a lot of changes and i think schools at a continuous they have to be continuous learning organizations so i am seeing that you know at amity i can say amity schools they have planned we are doing a very uh, large at the end of june we are holding a complete training program for teachers and you know counselors and principals so like that i'm sure all schools are doing it so it is a great experience helping students to become more able to deal with in this most chaotic world so thank you to all and i think we can have quickly we can take up uh, the questions sachin that have come from the participants thank you all sure ma'am uh, thanks for thanks for your words of wisdom uh, my question goes to dr arena mukherji with the prescribed cm how much autonomy and freedom does a teacher have in the class and uh, this is one of the question that has been asked uh, by the attendees and i must say more than 200 uh, participants are uh, listening to your wonderful thoughts of this uh, this panel uh, uh, arena mukherjee ma'am can you hear me now yes yeah yeah yes ma'am yes ma'am yes um uh, you know um uh, the, the, the curriculum uh, prescribed cbse provides uh, a lot of scope for um, the intellectual development and um, integration uh and uh, and a lot of innovation uh, cbs is um uh is not the same anymore i mean they're coming up with fantastic um, ideas for not only principals but teachers and students and there's a whole uh, change in the philosophy so um um the, it, it is uh, the curriculum now is more uh, learner uh, uh, centered and the teacher has a lot of uh, freedom to try out and uh, foster uh, you know the core competencies of uh, um, uh, and integrate the co curricular with uh, with uh, curricular uh, activity so uh, yes um, uh, there is lot, lots lot of scope for innovation thank you okay so i'm uh, making the question little more diverse Uh, there has been been a concept of vocational skills implementation in the school now having said that we all know that what kind of challenges that no school fraternity face from the parents or from the student size or at say uh, your administration point of view uh, uh, sunita or ma'am what is your view on the same point that uh, how teacher have a role in the class no they have the autonomy and the freedom in the class uh, sunita or ma'am 
uh, keeping the, the point of vocational skills also in the mind. No, uh, vocational skills is yeah, where vocation training is concerned. You see, even our educators, you know, have always been saying that vocational training is something which we need to give to the students. We need to equip them with certain skills. Education is one part of it. Now, equipping the child with a skill so that he is able to become independent is something which even our CBSE board is uh, propagating a lot. And there are a lot of uh, skill-based courses which CBSE has introduced recently. Where our management is concerned and where the teachers are concerned, we don't have any uh, problems like as uh, one of the panelists said, that we need to be flexible the school has to be flexible. The teachers have to be flexible. So there's a lot of flexibility in today's educators to embrace these things. So where vocational training is concerned or skill-based training is concerned, we have fully embraced and there is no such issue. Neither from okay. our side and I think the students are also very open towards it. You see, if things like artificial intelligence is being introduced, you know, tomorrow's world belongs to it. We we have already been thrown to uh, thrown into online teaching so i think um, uh, you know going into vocational training is something we should all take it up right very well said ma'am very well said uh, my next question is to uh, nita arora ma'am uh, how teachers are addressing the challenge in the class with the varied kind of students nita arora ma'am yeah teachers have adapted to becoming learners themselves first of all that's the beauty of the situation that the teachers are now learning new things they're ready to try they're ready to expose their inadequacies to the children even parents for that matter and that has given them the confidence that people are judging them people are with them in fact i have never found even one parent saying that this teacher is not good only one parent once shared that why did your teacher scold my child this is i have never seen a scolding earlier i said you never attended those classes earlier the child hadn't done the homework and she said, why you didn't see my WhatsApp? So you may say that, but otherwise teachers have come out of the cocoon and they're actually taken a flight. And I'm so happy that they are becoming better and now they're ready to embrace technology, not only technology, even for that subject matter. They're also trying to understand how to make their online teaching work jovial for the child, how to take a, bring in the fun element. Today, I took a workshop for CBSC in dramatics in teaching. And there, a teacher gave me an example that she gave a role play as a rational number. A child became a rational number and was talking about these are my qualities and was emoting. Imagine a math teacher using drama in class. And the teachers are ready to experiment. They're ready to wait. I do hope and wish that online teaching would not be all boring. It should not only be about transferring knowledge and completing the tasks. It is about connecting. It is about emotional connect. It is about life skills, about values. It is also about just fun factor, not anything. Don't think about, oh, this is what the benefit of Stories to not without giving the moral about it. Let the different morals be adopted by different teachers. The moral I see is that I During that online teaching, there was an instant drama that the teachers created. I said, do that in your classes. Why should you only be talking all the while in an online class? Let the children do the talking. You can give projects to different children. Somebody's asked the question, how do we modify the exam system? Believe me, this is going to happen. The exam system is bound to undergo bound to undergo changes right now what we did was just have a google form examination um, or a team examination microsoft but i feel there would be a couple of children putting up their projects online and other children to assess them the peer assessment the collaborative assessment i think there are a lot of changes that would happen even the way the cbsc is working in covid situation does not turn good I think there will be a lot of improvement in the way cbsc conducts 10th and 12th wow. examination i think universities have to be ready to find out another system of admitting children, not just depend on CBSC marks. And if that happens, believe me, that will give us so much freedom to teach in 9, 10, 11, 12. Right now, I am free to teach whatever I want to teach till 8. The moment the children come to 9, I'm worried about it. Confine yourself. Till 8, we said, teach them as much as you want. Anything beyond the book, change the topics. You can leave a chapter on 9, 10. You can't even leave a sentence or talk about leaving a chapter. Because the CBSC has run out of questions. So they try to look for newer questions and there comes in a very unimportant big question too. So I do hope the university right. can entrance examinations and this hover of board will go away from the minds of principals, teachers and children and parents. 
Right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, next question is to uh, uh, Amita Mohan, ma'am. Uh, we need to test students on questions which are not answered in a cut copy page. So this is asked by one of the attendee. And to an extent, I also agree. In fact, in this COVID-19 times when online classes are happening, what is your take on this question and uh, how do you think we should address this? The process of cut copy paste in the, uh, in the examination, the, the way we test our students, uh, how we should go about it further? view to improvise on that aspect i think uh, the cut copy paste uh, especially for the answers we do not encourage it because that is not going to bring out any creativity in the child and the moment a, a lot of children do it i'm not saying they will not do it they are going to do it it's how you handle it you need to let them know that a this is not going to help them B, question could come in any form. It could be in high order thinking skill question. How would do the A, do the cut copy paste there then? And maybe uh, solutions may come that the children for certain categories, like the brighter ones could be given different questions, the mediocre ones could be given different questions, and the lower average performers could be given different questions. And that could in fact, you know, uh, avoid the possibility of cut copy paste uh, solutions for them. And I think, the more you encourage the child, as all the panelists were saying, the more you motivate a child, the more you show the greener pasture on the other side that how if your creativity will add on to more marks for you or will add on to more dogs for you. I think that the encouragement is going to work wonders on that for the children. And I, I feel it's very important for a child, first of all, to understand. Now, the reason first you have to understand why did the child do the cut copy paste thing? A, because the child did not understand the question. B, the child did not find it very interesting at all. C, the child felt, how is this question going to help him later on in life? So let me take out the easiest solution, what is available in my hand. So once if these three things are targeted, are explained to the child, the cut, copy, paste uh, problem that is going to occur or may occur or is occurring, the, num the person will go down for that. That is my take on it. And the so, uh, do, do, do you support it? Uh, Sachin, yes, I think one thing that I think we should add here, what um, so Samita Mohan is mentioning, while the way the question paper is set, I think, are you really trying to look at rote learning where people get on, you know, with the information? That is what students do when they're trying to get some information from Google or elsewhere. But if you have a question paper which is much more balanced, where you look at application, where you look at creativity. Suppose you are giving a group project to the students to create a, some kind of a, an application. So where you're looking at more creative solutions and there is much more student engagement. So that those kind of patterns are coming up now because no more are you going to just get straight questions on information. So one part is important that what is most important, we want them to become knowledgeable. So knowledge has to be there, but I think uh, more and more questions which needs focus on application, research, research-based questions are going to become the future need. Because you know why this is so important, I think this is a great question, because of the way the industries are going to work is completely going to change. So what do any of the students for now in the plus two, in 10 plus 2, and from the time they go into the university, possibly the work life will change. Look, we are looking at remote working spaces. So I think it is important to make them understand that they have to seek knowledge. So they, they should be constantly seeking knowledge, and thus the assessment pattern should also be worked out in that manner. Perfect. Uh, I think this, is, this has been summed very well. Uh, my next question is to uh, Dr. C.V. Singh. Uh, sir, any specific issue that you faced from parents with respect to online teaching and uh, what, are, what are your suggestions? Because this also can uh, come as a hindrance in a superior classroom experience. Your views on it, sir. Uh, sir, within night, there was a 360-degree change in the scenario of school education. Perfect, sir. Parents were not prepared, teachers were not prepared, even the students were not prepared for that. The major issue is that in earlier days before uh, 20th of March, 
we were announcing in the assembly writing the notice to the parents that please do not give the mobile phone to the students and well, on 22nd we are requesting the parents to please provide the mobile phone to your child regarding the internet regarding the data now everything is available with the student hands which we were avoiding earlier now we have to adopt the technology adapt the technology assimilate the technology without technology we cannot survive but sir proper training is required for the teachers also and for the students also we have to be techno friendly not technocrat how can we use the technology for the welfare of the students for the welfare of the teachers certainly we are facing lot of problems but now we have reduced them to 50 or 60% now teachers also students also parents also have understood this that without technology now education cannot run so now we are mentally prepare for that that we have to adopt the technology and we have to resolve the problems which we are facing in the coming days and gradually we are getting the training of that thank you sir right sir thank you sachin this question uh, you can make it a little open to all if anybody has to share any view that they have handled in the school about parent interaction because this is a very important topic that parent involvement in this adaptability and flexibility is so critical that they provided that kind of a platform to the students they allowed right. them they must have lot of them must have been taking some kind of a internet better wifi or a connectivity during this phase so maybe right. any other principal who have felt and have handled this issue uh mr tankaj so would you like to take this question i was about to because i just unmuted myself uh to be honest in our in our union territory now jammu is a union territory i just want to share that we have uh, restrictions on the uh, internet bandwidth to be used so we all are working at 2g so you can imagine conducting a class at a bandwidth of 2g is impossible uh but even then we tried a level best but yes parents had this problem because it's not that uh, we have parents in the urban areas we are catering to parents living in the rural areas also where the connectivity issues are enormous so what we really did uh, yes i do agree with ms sunita arora that she shared that we opted for uh, more of uh, you know links to be given to the students and at their own ease they could use it as and when wherein they felt the, yes the connectivity was fine they, they could uh, use the internet at the access so this is how we also have been working but uh, i encourage my teachers to prepare their own videos because i believe until unless the teacher does not learn the students will never ever get encouraged to use the technology for their understanding so the teachers have to be a guide they have to act as a leader to make the students become the future leaders so this is one challenge my teachers faced and they took it as a challenge that they've done it well they are working on their uh, i would say the uh, skills to work on uh, the you know the how to prepare a good video uh, as far as teaching is concerned uh, so that's what we had we have opted but yes internet connectivity is a big challenge in our union territory even now so we are still trying to cope up we're trying to look for more solutions still right thank you thank you uh, the next question that has been asked is a uh, uh, regards to classroom experience so i think there is experiential learning concept is also involved because when when the students lands up into university and other aspect this 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 area is somewhere is not been addressed so my my question is to uh, dr titanjali and probably i'll take a follow up question the same question with dr padmavali also with being in being the university Uh, she is a dean academics and she has a lot of initiatives similarly so uh, first uh, i'll i'll request uh, dr gitanjali to please share her views on inclusive of live projects in collaboration with the university and how your schools are doing it uh, yes yes sir 
actually i was feeling that what you want to ask from me that is experiential education over there for the in the schools which will help them in collaborating with the higher education right yes yes right. huh. so in our school but what we are doing what we are doing that we are making the students to have all kind of exposure for different kind of activities like group discussions like uh, mun activities like uh, i parliament mo parliament and uh, you can say uh, all those kind of activities which were under, otherwise understood to be uh, happening over there for the mature students mature children, mature people but now we are having it over there for example there was a voting uh, campaign also in our school so the students were told how to vote means if naturally uh, without uh, taking special care of uh, without taking any name of any person without any prejudice but we were making them to think very very open minded and what points they should keep in their mind so this was happening in the classes even 7th and 8th and 9th also those students who were never thinking about this voting campaign and all that so but my point is that all those kind of activities which are happening outside the campus we were making them to happen over there in some replica replica form in the school also so they were becoming part and parcel of the societal happenings and finally what is happening that what they are going to think for themselves in the higher education system they are planning now only today only and uh, particularly group discussions and participation at the debate and declamation and uh, uh, creating something new at their own and uh, participating in some kind of project activities particular art and craft activities also all those activities if we collaborate in the school level they start visualizing themselves that yes i am going to do such kind of activity in my future also in my higher education system also and i am very happy when our students go for educate for go for admission in a higher universities and one child for example he came back last time and he said ki ma'am because of this activity i got uh, a grade over there in this college and i could get admission over there and i was patting myself ki yo thank god that this kind of activity was initiated this very year only and because of this the child could get so much confident and he could get admission over there so there are so many activities which means means the school is not a small campus now school is completely a replica of the whole society and we are to train our children we are to train our students we are to prepare such kind of environment where a child should feel them himself a complete person complete human being complete identity he is not a small boy now he is not a just baby he is now mature enough and he is understanding the things and he is preparing himself and naturally the facilitators the mentors they have to be uh, equipped with such kind of sure. understanding how to manage how to uh, mentor them how to create right. and how to manage the time also because slavers completion is one thing but all those kind of activities are also and i give 100% uh, importance to uh, both the things in a balance and if a student right. uh, feels like that i could not get it uh, okay uh, because now online things was uh, being discussed i would just add up to that also that not only that we are teaching through our online system we are making those children to participate in different kind of activities also and i was feeling a child who was feeling hesitant on the stage and today if he is preparing a video at home in front of his parents and when this this video is being broadcast or telecast over there in on our school site the child gets more confidence so the confidence right. building up confidence building up is very very important thing that we can uh, collaborate over here in our school system sure which will help thank you him. Uh, uh, dr padmagali banerjee ma'am yes Yes, uh, I think uh, great points. I mean, uh, which was just now shared, and I just want to add that, for example, uh, in a university setup, there are a lot of centers of excellence. These are like your know, practice, research, outreach centers. For example, if you say two years back, we had a very large uh, young scientists uh, conference where people, students from about more than fifteen to twenty countries were here, and a lot of participants were from the schools. so these young scientists average age was from say 12 to about 18 so th so this was a great learning because you know we are now part of a very interconnected world so if you want to more and more that the schools can you know come together form a kind of a league and work with the universities and you know these centers of excellence say, say for example here we have uh, centers on 
linguistics, we have centers on big studies, we have center of excellence on, you know, robotics, like, you know, he mentioned. So a lot of youngsters can get an, you know, experience by doing some life projects. So through that, wherever they go, it could be to any part of the world, but they will definitely be a better, you know, learning that takes place. So I think, yes, uh, since the question was interesting, there is need for connecting and collaborating with higher learning institutions as well as with the industry. And I just want to address one more question because I was reading it. People, somebody is pointing out that now that technology has come in in a big way, what is going to happen post COVID? What we do not know is that we do not know when this whole phenomena is going to end. But one thing for certainly that I can mention to you is that the normal that we are going to go is going to be a new normal. So already, if you look at the MHRD and others are taking, you know, you know, a lot of discussions are happening so far as higher education policy is concerned or K-12 policy is concerned, or if you look at the sustainable developmental goals are concerned, it is going, we are going through that change. And remember our students, the children of the schools right now, they are doing their education at the time of crisis. So there is need, to, need for a very humane approach where you are going to nurture them, provide a good, happy environment in school, look at their well-being part of it. So this is, I thought we must address. I looked at a question that was mentioned here. Thank you. Sure. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, in fact, uh, to uh, to share with the, uh, we have a concept at university under the leadership of Provide Chancellor, ma'am. Uh, we started exponential learning workshops for the schools. So uh, last year, uh, approximately 20 schools and more than 1,000 students pa participated in, in these kind of live projects at the university that uh, were uh, no uh, mentioned that they were uh, sent by the various schools across uh, Haryana and Delhi and CR, and this is in continuation to that. Uh, further, uh, Dhirendra sir, uh, I would like to take it forward that con uh, assessment and evaluation pattern is continuing. So, what is your take? Uh, you know, how we, what should be the way, final way out, uh, conclusive to uh, uh, to judge the student or to give him marks? Uh, Dhirendra sir, question is for you. Thank you, Mr. Juneja. Uh, actually, if you see uh, on this 14th of May, there is a new circular which has come from the CBSC and right. which talks about competency-based education. Right. It's primarily based on the Bloom's taxonomy. Mm -hmm. So it is right from ba very basic things like remembering and understanding to the ultimate, which is uh, create creation. And uh, the assessment and the teaching everything has to be now has to be drawn in terms of learning outcome so end of every topic uh, what is the level of uh, what is the level of uh, expertise which we expect from our students that has to be well thought of instead of uh, having a competitive spirit now the child will the education mode has to change to collaboration so when I am doing any kind of assessment or evaluation, a child is not competing with a fellow child. He will be competing with his own, on his own. That, okay, before uh, beginning of this topic, this was my level. This is where I stand. And end of the session, this is where I, uh, this is where I have gained. And this is what is my the current strength. So assessment and evaluation processes are going to, for a major, uh, rehaul now which will be based on the bloom's taxonomy and uh, there's one more direction which has come from the board is that uh, in every week three to four lessons should be based on the interdisciplinary that means that uh, teachers from diverse background right from languages to science teachers to maths teacher even the uh, fine arts everybody and sports everybody has to sit together choose a topic and then this has to be in, inserted into the day-to-day uh, -day curriculum. So it is going to be very, very diverse because uh, the current situation uh, has exposed our weakness of the educational system also. That marks alone is not sufficient. We need to think on ground and we need to evolve with uh, passage of time and 
COVID, I see that apart from whatever skills we had, IQ, uh, SQ, EQ, there will be one more Q which will be added to our uh, uh, in our kitty, which is going to be the adaptability quotient. So the one who will be able to adapt to the situation, uh, he will is going to survive. And on that count, uh, the Bloom's taxonomy gives us a very clear way out how to design our uh, assessment and evaluation processes. Thank you. Right, sir. Right. Uh, just to add, uh, uh, there is AQ and there is a OQ also. Uh, that's the optimism question. Uh, I would request uh, Dr. Padmagali, ma'am, to please share a few words uh, on it and uh, then he, uh, her final remarks on the same. Okay. I think Mr. Singh has given a good point about the changes that are happening. And like you mentioned that we are going to into a very chaotic world and uh, the students are going to face a very, very uh, different situation around. So it has been seen that people who have more resilient, you're able to adapt to one kind of acquire the, uh, you know, the attitude. So that is primarily focusing on your optimistic intelligence. That while you are concentrating on the overall, you know, uh, adaptability, the way they are understanding their knowledge. So beyond, I think, IQ and SQ, what is becoming very critical is it is optimistic intelligence and that is the OQ. And very interestingly, it can also be measured. So you can have a score and as individual can grow, so you can improve your resilience on it. Right. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, just to add, uh, ma'am has written is a famous book, The Power of Positivity and the Seven Sense, which mentions the OQ and uh, its desired outcomes. Uh, thank you so much, uh, our esteemed panelists, uh, for joining us today's session. Ma'am, can we have your final remarks? I think uh, my remarks are my, now it's only a vote of thanks <laughs> because I think uh, this, I don't know, it is becoming a very beautiful weather, at least in Gurgaon. I don't know all of the participants. I, I'm really happy that you took out so much of time of last one and a half hours to listen to all of these uh, eminent administrators. This was for me something which is like a mindful meditation. I have enjoyed every bit of information that has come in. We are going to compile a complete white paper on all the discussions that we have had. And we will not only give it to the principals, maybe we can make it available for our participants as well. So if you have already you know, joined us with your email ID, possibly I will request uh, Mr. Juneja and Dr. Reena to make it available to all the participants. And you know, as I, I believe in, it is a journey. And always think that you know, for the students who are out there, possibly many youngsters may have joined. You know, remember, don't look at your immediately what you're doing. Look at a lifetime. Don't look at the six months or three months of this uncertainty that is there in life. Look at a bigger life. Think about what you can do to, to your community, how you can be a good person, good human being. I think that is how we are really going to uh, see a very better and a beautiful world around. And I am very optimistic that India, we are going to see a lot of things happening. You must have seen people who are following the news, a lot of youngsters who are here, you must have seen a lot of companies from Korea, from different parts of the world, Japan, are going to really set up their industries here. So I see India coming up in a big way. So a more challenge to the youngsters, you should become the change agents. So all the youngsters, so and all of these you know, mentors that you have, all the lovely principles who have spoken, all these words of wisdom from each one are going to give you a direction in life. So all the best to you. Stay safe, stay healthy, but become stronger, be resilient.